That is why they call it extreme sport. Good day and welcome. Today we are here in a pump track competition. So people riding their bikes, skateboards and stuff around the pump track. Today I'll be using uh, the ProTech 25, iFlight ProTech 25 with the Insta360 GO 2. Possibly one of the best tiny cameras for FPV flying, possibly. Let's see what's so great about this and what's not so great about this. So first things first, the size of this camera is insane. It's this tiny and uh, it works with magnets. So if you have metal surfaces, it will stick to them. And you also get a bunch of different, very useful accessories. Like for example, this thing, you can stick this stand to basically anywhere and uh, you when you take it off you just wash this thing and it will be sticky again then you also get this pendant thing that you put around your neck under the shirt and you have your camera here discreetly capturing whatever you're experiencing which is also an amazing accessory and also this clip-on thing that you can clip onto a bag or if you have a cap put it on there and you have yourself first person view. And of course the case itself, which is also magnetic and uh, you can control the camera settings through here. Not all of them, you can like slightly change the modes and uh, that's pretty much it. If you want to change the settings, you have to access the phone. I got this camera because one of my dreams is to have a tiny, tiny FPV freestyle drone. and. If I want a tiny, tiny FPV freestyle drone, I also need a tiny, tiny camera. And this is that camera. Now let's check some of the footage that I have captured with various FPV drones using this camera. They sent it to me. Uh, thank you so much, Freewell. And this is basically a type of a selfie stick that can be transformed into many different things. Like, for example, uh, this type of thing. This type of a thing. And uh, this type of a thing. You can, you can bend it and stuff. All right, let's go. most amazing features for this tiny camera is its stabilization because I can do all that with my hands basically handheld and get gimbal like stabilization which is insane the image quality for the size of this gear is actually pretty good for social media, it will look, look great. Uh, maybe not so great on a bigger screen because the resolution is only 1440p, that's the maximum. One of the greatest features about this thing is its stabilization. It uses flow state stabilization that you can um, tinker around after you capture. You can make it so it's locked on the, the horizon or you can set it in the FPV mode where it follows the rolls of the FPV drone. But there is one thing I really, really don't like about this camera. I, I hope they can fix it in a firmware update of, or something because it does not remember your settings. 
whenever you switch, uh, whenever you switch this thing off, or or sometimes even whenever you take it out of the case it tends to forget the settings and it gets annoying. There have been few times where I, I was like thinking I'm capturing in the pro mode, but for some reason it's switched back to the regular mode and I did not get the footage I wanted to get. And then we come to this another amazing feature. It, uh, you can have the video rendered in 16 by nine or nine by 16 or in a square. It's a very versatile capturing device. But yeah, that fact that it forgets the settings, to get around that, you basically just have to always take out your phone and like start capturing using the Insta360 Go, uh, Insta360 app. Because in there, you set everything up, you press record and it will be fine. I really wish that this camera would remember settings even when you're not using the Phone. Oh yeah, and if you want to get the most out of this camera for FPV flying, you definitely need ND filters. Because without ND filters, there will be jello, there will be some warping in the image, and it does not look too good. When you add an ND filter, it's all gone and the footage looks great. If you want this camera for FPV flying, pick yourself some ND filters right away, you will thank me later. If Insta360 releases an update where this camera can actually remember some of the settings you, have, you are using, this would be an almost perfect FPV, tiny FPV camera. But now it's just really good. Okay, maybe not really good, it's good. For its size, it's really good. But that part about the settings, it's, uh, it's quite annoying. For example, whenever I finish my flight, I usually tend to capture in uh, a manual mode with uh, manual shutter, manual ISO, manual everything so that it does not change the colors or, or, or exposure or all that. And whenever I finish my flight, I take it out of the TPU mount. I put it back here so it charges a bit and uh, when I take it out, I have to connect the phone again and go back to settings and uh, it will be on auto and I will have to change all of the settings again. The way it changes the settings, it's on auto and when you place it in manual, it, the, it defaults the ISO on 400 and white balance on auto. So you always have to change those settings to whatever settings you need. ISO 100 always, because everything more than that will be grainy. But uh, yeah, I just really, really wish that it would remember settings. That's the only thing I really dislike about this camera. But all of the rest is, it's, it's amazing. It even has like these feet, so you can have it like that. Hopefully you were able to enjoy the footage I captured. Hopefully you learned maybe something new today. Uh, if you did, you know what to do. If you want to get your own Insta360 Go 2, check the link in the description. If you get it through there, you know, you're helping out my channel and that is very much appreciated. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.